Wow. Hello. Hello, um, I'm Jana. And I'm Alex. And we're here to talk about a thing called copyright. It's a set of laws that far extend their scope and the purpose, and a set of laws that can bring the end of culture as we know it. So let's start off with three short anecdotes. That would be you. Say you just reply to an email. You click reply and you copy the text of the original sender into your email. But hey, you don't have the author's permission. That is an unauthorized copy right there. You do old Bart Simpson while talking on the phone. That means you made a derivative work without the author's permission. Or say you're getting a tattoo of Tom and Jerry. That is also an unauthorized reproduction of a copyrighted work and also potentially an unauthorized public exposure. So what do all these have in common? They're all illegal, but not in the cute and fun way like you had a beer but you weren't 18 illegal. Illegal in the way that you can be sued for hundreds of thousands of euros for copyright infringement. Basically, you are now a pirate. And that's because of excessively strong copyright laws. But since you're in this conundrum anyway, you might as well try and find out how it is that this has become possible nowadays. Take it away. Same movies you see in the theater, I got them on DVD and they're free. 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 I'll be honest, they're illegally downloaded, but they're free. Yeah, okay, I'll take them. Can I take two? Well, sure you can take two, but there's a catch. If you take these movies, this nice woman right here loses her job. Yeah, I don't know her. No, yeah, so. these are illegally downloaded movies. Because of that, people like her are losing their jobs. You're making this so literal. I mean, is this really... Yeah, is... there's a consequence to all this stuff. I'm gonna take them. You are? Yeah. Why? Because you have no soul? All right, so copyright or no soul. And these are very convincing arguments, actually, and they go like this. So copyright is a moral duty to protect artists, their works, their jobs, and so on. Copyright as a form of property, as a monetary incentive, and also as exclusive control over all copies. Because otherwise, how would these people make a living, right? These are all rather compelling arguments that we would normally tend to agree with. However, you have just been sued for doodling Bart Simpson. Property is infinite, you own it forever, and it's unviolable, nobody can trespass it. On the other side, copyright is for a limited period of time, and furthermore, people can use it without your consent in many ways like parody or criticism. So copyright is not actually a right or a form of property, but more of a privilege. Now, when this limited span of time expires, your work falls into the public domain. That means everyone can take bits and pieces of it to create something new, just like you did with Bart Simpson. The ultimate goal of copyright is the enrichment of the public domain, a richer realm of culture, if you will. In a nutshell, copyright is for a limited period of time, it's not property, it's a privilege, and it's not for you, the author, alone, but for the whole world to benefit from. Well, that's in theory, because in reality, you've just been sued for doodling Bart. Want more weird examples? We've got them. Say you go to Paris and visit the Eiffel Tower to Brussels and see the Atomium. If you take a picture of any of these landmarks at night, you are violating copyright because the lighting designs over these landmarks are copywritten. Museums are not allowed to display letters from the First World War, so there are a number of letters which we call orphan works, and all of these works are protecting under law until 2038, I think. See, the problem with copyright policies is they all originate with this one fear. The fear that new technologies risk to endanger, to threaten, to even destroy existing business models. And their solution is stricter control for authors, for distributors, for producers, so they can continue to create. So here's an industry that relies on control as an incentive to create. That sounds strange. Let's break this argument down into two. 
Number one, control. Now, any manager anywhere will tell you that too much control is a bad thing. Public domain is an uncontrollable resource. It's a, an immense source of inspiration to which anybody has free access. Think about a world in which there were no awesome stories with zombies and vampires. Well, you see, 95% of these awesome stories that some of you probably like would not exist if zombies and vampires were not in the public domain. 77 years ago, Walt Disney released Snow White. It's an original work, of course, but heavily based on the Brothers Grimm story, which was in the public domain. But Walt Disney's film is still under copyright until 2036. That means you can create something new based on it, even though that is what Disney did to the Brothers Grimm story. Too much control is a bad thing. Now, let's delve even deeper into this. Current laws say that copyright extends for the author's lifetime plus another 70 years. That means that most works created during the 20th century are still under copyright today. That is a whole century of works. If you can't quite wrap your head around that, let's put it this way. Almost the entire history of film and movies is still under copyright. Also, almost the entire history of recorded music. And all of this is lost culture. So ask yourself this. Can copyright really stimulate production of new works if there are no works to build upon? And is a dead author, or does a dead author care that 70 years later his work is still protected by copyright? Chances are that that author doesn't care, because you know they're dead. But who does care? It's those rights holders, the third parties that have gotten used to owning and financially exploiting those works, those same individuals and organizations who are constantly pushing for more control. To them, unknown material is a tragedy. To them, culture is a farmland that you have to exploit, you have to take money from it. If you don't, it just goes barren. So think about how awesome it would be to make your own version of Lord of the Rings or The Godfather or 1984. If, I don't know, James Bond or Indiana Jones were in the public domain, you could create your own adventures with them. Right. Too much control is a bad thing. Number two, the incentive. You don't always need the promise of money or control to make stuff. Most of corporate works are made purely for money, and we should find ways to protect them. And Mozart or the Beatles actually did work for financial gain at one point in their life. But explain us this. At the moment, there are 307 million photos freely licensed on Flickr. There are 10 million videos on YouTube. And there's a total of 882 million Creative Commons licensed works online today. See, the thing is that with the advent of new cheap technologies and the internet, works have more room to breathe. And that breathing room has made us aware that sometimes innovation and creativity happen in far, far more interesting places than under proprietary control or moral rights or under the rule of financial incentives. Some industry players actually realized that Maybe limiting control brings them more advantages than any drawbacks they can think of. Android and Linux, the market leaders in OSs and servers, are both licensed freely. Tesla Motors, the market leader in electric cars, actually released all of their patents uh, this year. People don't need the promise of control or money to create. Because, you know, it's not like there's a shortage of stuff like jokes, original jokes, uh, perfumes, food recipes, clothing designs, furniture designs, car body designs, and all these industries have very low protection under the law. There's a very limited production. But in gross sales, this is music, films, and books, so the most copyright protected industries, and this is furniture, fashion, automobiles, and food. So control is an incentive to create? Not anymore. 
it was a hard argument to make 50 or 100 years ago, but today it definitely doesn't hold. Okay, so what about our moral duty to the artist, right? How else can authors make money if everything is for free? The short answer is that if it's free, that doesn't mean people won't pay for it necessarily. You see, there are a lot of filmmakers, musicians, literary authors today who are uploading their work on the internet free of charge for donations, for tips, and most importantly, for the loyalty of their fans. These are artists who understand new technologies, who embrace them, and who are not afraid of the natural way in which we enjoy and share works. They understand the thing that most of us miss. And that thing is exposing as many people as possible to works. All works is a good thing. So how to make money? OK, there is creative reuse which actually stands to generate more revenue for the authors. Think about the time when the printing press appeared, when the camera appeared, or the CD. All these new technologies essentially open new channels, new venues, and new media for authors to get their works across to more people, broader audiences. Piracy. Actually, some of your biggest fans are pirates. They're three times more likely to come to your concert buy a t-shirt or a poster, and in sales, pirates are a lot bigger than non-pirates. They, they spend a lot of money both on physical merchandise and in digital merchandise. Okay, so money? With the advent of crowdfunding platforms like Indiegogo, Kickstarter, and a lot of others, the way in which authors can make money today has changed forever. For instance, musicians can offer their albums for a lower price, but also incentivize their audiences with nice little personalized perks. Or they can create uh, special limited edition packs that fans would be likely to pay more for. They can offer bundles. Or, as some are already doing, they can offer their works for free with this amendment that you can donate if you want to. And you'd be surprised how much money one can make if one constantly puts out good quality work. People will support you if you don't make them do it. You know what? You don't even have to trust us. You can ask artist Amanda Palmer, who has recently made $1.2 million all on her own. Here's a picture of a cat. You've <laughs> come to this point. You deserve it. It's freely licensed also. All right, so copyright is a very difficult subject, and especially difficult when you don't got all the facts right. So we started a web series that tried to tackle these issues, uh, debunk some myths, and bring all these facts to light. We've done this because we believe the debate on these issues is very important. We need an actual debate that would reach past the advocates, past the, law the lobbyists, past the researchers that will be balanced enough to reach the general public. You know, him, me, you, and the rest of the guys who risk getting sued for doodling Bart Simpson. Our web series is called Copy Me. You can find it online, on YouTube, on Vimeo, and on the Pirate Bay. So share it, download it. Remix it. Enjoy. That's it. Thank Thanks. you.